Hello and welcome to this presentation. This presentation will be on the benefits of model-based definition or MBD and the benefits for design, manufacturing, and metrology. My name is Daniel Campbell. I'm the Vice President of Model-Based Definition at CAVIDIA. I have a long background in the area of digital metrology, especially on the side of software, which is my background, and have been in, in the area of digital metrology for some time. I'm a member of the Board of Directors of the Digital Metrology Standards Consortium and the Chair of the QIF Working Group. I am the Vice President of Model-Based Definition with CAPVIDIA. CAPVIDIA is a company um, that's all about data translation and validation. Right now, our focus really is strongly in the area of model-based definition and the use of model-based definition definition and downstream workflows, so machine consumable data. And there are a couple sort of pillars to, to our approach uh, to this. You know, first is uh, we very much embrace standards, especially the ISO QIF, uh, which is one that I'll be talking about a little bit here. And then our partnerships with some of the major CAD vendors that create the major CAD authoring tools. So let's just jump right into it. First, you know, why model-based definition? I mean, why is model-based definition something which is important? So we hear a lot about, you know, a lot of these big terms that you'll see here are on the right, you know, model-based definition, model-based enterprise, industry 4.0, digital enterprise, uh, digital twin, digital thread, and so forth. But the question is uh, how to take these uh, past the point of just being buzzwords and making them into some form of a reality. And uh, the underlying theme that enables all of these items is good quality data. And so that's the main question that needs to be answered. How can we start creating data which is well-structured, which is machine-readable, which is interoperable between uh, different software tools, can be used in different domains uh, where it can be authored in design and used downstream in manufacturing, and so on and so forth. The choice of how we organize our data is extremely important and foundational to all of these items here uh, listed here on the right. So what is the value of model-based definition? Beyond just the idea of, uh, you know, it's really cool because it's in 3D, how can it actually provide more value uh, to enterprise? And I think there are a couple different areas here that are worth noting, and it could be divided into a couple different areas. The first is the upper arrow there, which is enhanced enhancements in terms of improvements in process and in automation as you flow from design to manufacturing to measurement. And so a little bit what I mean, you know, first on the process side, manufacturing is all about implementing extremely complicated processes, of repeating them or implementing them and, and running them in extremely repeatable ways. And so at the end of the day, it's essential to view process as what is important and not have a reliance on any any specific or individual personnel. So the idea would be in the implementation of a lot of these processes, a lot of these digital processes, is to you know to the extent possible try to remove the the human in the loop when it comes to some of the more process oriented activities. Where this is also, by the way, uh, good on the engineering side or from the point of view of the engineer in that it now leaves to the engineer things that are a bit more suited for the human mind like uh, ingenuity and, and solving complex tasks rather than repeating a certain process over and over and over. Next on the automation side of things, uh, this is the next step after there's an improvement of process because of the implementation of model-based definition. Once you have a well-defined business process, it becomes largely possible to automate that process. So this is when we open up the door to you know very, very big time savings in terms of removal of manual processing of, of data or manual processing of tasks. And then in the other direction, the flow of data back up to the design is sort of the other direction where I think there's enormous benefit to be gained from model-based definition. Now, with you know the rise of Google and, and Facebook and the other you know, social media giants, it's now considered common wisdom that data is now the world's most valuable resource. It's not, you know, it's no longer gold or oil, uh, but it's rather data. And um, manufacturing is the next major sec sector that has yet to unlock a lot of the potential for the for the use of data. Part of this is because of the complexity of the data in the manufacturing domain as compared to data which is entered into a search engine or data which is entered into a social media platform or something like that. But we are on the cusp of being able to harness that data and McKinsey estimates that there's value to unlock between basically between three and six trillion US dollars annually across some of the the major business functions in, in many different industries. And the largest of those is 
in the field of supply chain management and manufacturing. So there's a lot of value here to unlock in terms of having more structured and more organized data when it comes to your product and process data. The current state um, that we hear, that we see here on the left in terms of how our data is used in metrology to a large extent is that measurement data is mostly used for pass fail decisions. You know, uh, an article is measured and then a pass or fail decision is rendered and then the data is either discarded or it is effectively discarded in that, you know, maybe it's printed or written by hand onto a document and then scanned to a PDF, or it's put away into a, an Excel format and it's stored somewhere on a hard drive. So technically the data might still be available, but it's not useful in any practical sense. In this paradigm, metrology or inspection is not really viewed as a value-added activity. It's viewed as a, a necessary evil that is uh, important in order to filter out the, the parts which may be defective, but it's not something that is viewed as, as adding value uh, to the enterprise. But that should not be the state. So the future state, you know, we're spending a tremendous amount of resources gathering data on our part. So because of that data that's gathered, we, we're now at the point where we're learning a lot about the product that's being manufactured and the process that is creating that product, both of which are tremendously important to a manufacturing organization. So that data should be stored and it should be used, should be made use of. And this is really, you know, talking about the use of this data. This is where we're talking about the digital twin the digital twin of the product and the digital twin of the process which makes that product. By gathering data like this, it opens up enormous uh, opportunities in terms of advanced analytics and AI and other forms of data mining. And this begins to unlock this data as a source of value as opposed to uh, just a, a cost sink. Um, so those are the two sides as I see it of, uh, of benefit, you know, the process and automation flowing downstream and then the backflow of information uh, in terms of data analytics and so forth. So let's jump into a couple quick examples of how MBD data can be used to benefit an organization. And we're especially going to focus on the, the downstream automation side of things because it's that's sort of the lowest hanging fruit when it comes to trying to establish an MBD program that will show value. So first of all, we're going to talk about model-based definition CMM program generation. Right now, the paradigm for creating CMM programs is something similar to what we're seeing on this picture on the right, where we have an engineer who is a skilled engineer uh, who has a lot of knowledge about GDT, about CMM measurements, about the CMM software that uh, that is being used. And that person has to sit down with a 2D drawing and they'll load up some type of a CAD model, like a step model, inside of their CMM software, and they begin to manually enter the gd and into, uh, into their CMM software. The problems here are a few. You know, the first and most obvious one is that this is very labor-intensive and takes a long time. And you know, as I pointed out, the, uh, the person who uh, is required to do this has to be a very skilled person, which, mean that, which means that this ends up translating to a very expensive task. The other problem is that there's a lack of repeatability here in this process. You know, you can give it the same drawing to five different engineers, and you might get five different CMM programs. That's never a good thing in manufacturing. There will be different translations, or I mean, uh, different interpretations of some of the GD&T data. There will be translation errors or um, transcription errors when typing that data into the software and so forth. And so that's, you know, none of those are good things. And these are things that are addressed with a more MBD uh, workflow. With uh, an MBD workflow, the GDNT is specified in the native CAD system in which the product is authored. So on the right, we have a screenshot of uh, PTC's Creo Parametric CAD system. And in this case, not only is the model specified in that format, but the GDNT is entered into that as well. And then that GDNT is imported directly into the downstream uh, CMM software. So first of all, this eliminates an enormous amount of time spent in trying to do this. So there's a big benefit right there. And then, like I said, another, uh, another very nice thing about this is that it creates a much more repeatable process where when an MBD model exists, you're going to get the same 
result in your CMM software over and over, regardless of who the particular operator is. And the value of that should not be understated either. So we've gone through you know, many pilots in this area. One of them had a workflow like this, where we used a software system called Checkmate by Origin International. And we took data from, again, in this case, actually, from the Creo software. We exported it to the QIF MBD format, which is an ISO standard MBD format, which is optimized for digital metrology. We exported it to the QIF format, imported it into Checkmate, automatically generated a CMM program, and then exported that to, uh, or exported the results into Catvidia's MBD video software to view the results from the measurement directly back on that CAD model. So what were some of the time savings from this? Here's a bit of a description of a pilot uh, workflow that we went through, which was uh, basically what we just showed, but a bit more simplified. And we did this with Raytheon in the United States, and we used one of their parts. In fact, the part that was chosen for this was one of the one of the busiest parts that they could find because they really wanted to test kind of what the upper limits of what some of the benefits of, of such an approach could be. And so here's a little bit of a quick ROI analysis of what some of these results are. So the short story is that the manual process was estimated to take somewhere between 16 hours and 40 hours. And so for this analysis, we said that, okay, we'll call it 16 hours. The new workflow, this MBD-based workflow, which, and actually this was the first time that we had run through it with this particular part and with this particular CMM software, it took just under three hours. So right off the bat, just in terms of a pilot workflow, we we're looking at an 81% reduction in time. And so if we do some estimates here, you know, how many hours were saved on this particular MVD workflow, how many parts are programmed per year and so forth, you know, maybe for one small business unit, you know, we're talking about, yeah, about a thousand hours of time saved uh, just for one small you know, business unit in terms of CMM programming. And so if you can imagine if you had some of your skilled engineers and a large number of them all of a sudden had a, an extra thousand hours a year to devote to tasks which are more suited for for their particular skill set i think you can imagine the possibilities of what uh, how they could better spend their time so it's a big door opener another use case study that that we participated in a little bit more recently this was uh, completed in 2019 i think is when this was completed was with uh, it used to be called the dmdii uh, but now it's called MXD. It's a research facility in Chicago in the United States. And in this project, it was led by Lockheed Martin. And generally speaking, it was about the use of model-based definition and the QIF standard in order to implement model-based definition workflows across various domains, from design to analysis to manufacturing to measurement to maintenance, repair, and overhaul and linking all these domains together with MBD. A couple areas that we focused on in the metrology or the quality area were attempted automation or partial automation of CMM program generation, and then the optimization of CMM programs based on simulation tools like Pundit. In the case of the automation, we were seeing better results because the technology had progressed a little bit since the first pilot study. And we took what was a manual transcription task of five hours into the uh, Calypso software. It was a pretty busy part, a part with quite a, quite a large number of annotations. So it took five hours to enter this into the Calypso software, and our MBD-based process took 10 minutes. So that was a 97% reduction in time. Effectively, I mean, what we're talking about is that that block of time that, that is spent entering the GD&T is effectively eliminated. And uh, on the optimization side, uh, this was an interesting one. Basically, we were taking advantage of a lot of the, the capabilities of this software tool, the NX CMM software tool provided by Siemens. It has capabilities to use MBD and to automatically create a measurement plan. We did some work on linking up the Pundit simulation software with NX CMM. And using that software, we were able to run measurement uncertainty simulation and improve the results of the optimized CMM program by, in some of the, in some of the cases, on some of the features of the part, by a factor of four. So significant improvements in the quality of the measurement program which was generated. And so it's, it's very good things that are enabled by, by this uh, MBD process improvement. So maybe let's get into another workflow here, which is a bit more simple than, bit, more simple, a bit easier to do than a CMM automation workflow, but it's still a, a very interesting one. And actually it's, again, a big time saver. And that is just the idea of automatic generation of first article inspection documents, or maybe there are PPAP 
documents or ISIR documents or maybe it's SPC documents. Um, any type of documents which might be generated for the purposes of inspection, like, we'll see, like we see here in this image, which are often generated largely by hand. Uh, again, taking an enormous amount of time. So from here, what's possible is to take a QIF model, so an MBD model with 3D annotations on it, identify what the bill of characteristics is. Uh, in other words, what is the list of characteristics or items which uh, need to be measured? This process is also called ballooning or bubbling. And next, taking that data and simply exporting it in a tabular form to a spreadsheet like Excel. And then the interesting thing is after using Excel, Excel doesn't have to be the end of your digital thread. The data that's entered into the Excel can be brought back into the model-based definition and brought back to the QIF format which again shows uh, some of the strengths of, of the QIF, of the QIF format in terms of data associativity and digital twin. So maybe let me just jump into some general conclusions about model-based definition and why model-based definition is important and why model-based definition will be something that you'll uh, continue to hear more and more about over the next few years as it continues to, to grow in terms of its adoption. So first of all, on the, on the left, it's a big opportunity to reduce inspection costs. And this is probably going to be the first and lowest hanging fruit in terms of the value that you'll find in your model-based definition implementation. Just that you know, inspection planning, whether that's CMM program generation or inspection documentation or whatever it might be, it's very laborious. And it takes a very skilled technician to do it. And to the extent that that can be automated, especially the tedious tasks, it can save a lot of money and it could free up the time of, of a very busy engineer to do more value-added tasks. Faster time to inspection, we found, has been an important benefit here. We found that metrology is often a bottleneck in production. And so this approach and uh, basically being able to speed up inspection time and require less inspection time in order to carry out the same task is something that frees up that bottleneck quite a bit. The next benefit is uh, the increase in inspection quality. You know, for one, measurement uncertainty simulation and simulation and optimization tools like that can be employed, as we saw in the MXD 1511 program. But also, uh, you know, simply the idea of relying a bit more on model-based definition in terms of as a using that as sort of an algorithmic way of specifying what your requirements are rather than relying heavily on GDT experts who again might interpret different GDT in different ways. When your GDT is encoded in the data format of MBD, then you could take much more of an algorithmic approach to the application of your GDT. The fourth benefit, and this is, you know, I sort of alluded to it a little bit, and I think it's the next, it's the big next thing after people get into automation. And that's just the idea of bringing measurement data into the digital thread. You know, so don't just spend an enormous amount of time and effort measuring your part only to basically use that data for pass fail purposes. Purposes. Start to gather that information, map it back to your product definition, and start to open the door for all kinds of data analytics that you can carry out using the results from your measurement linked to your model-based definition. And finally, another important error or value that we've had or that we found is the reduction of risk in terms of transcription and interpretation errors of, uh, of especially of the GDT, but really anything measurement related. Again, when it's done by, uh, when, when this tedious task is carried out by a software process, you will see a much lower incidence of this happening. And with that, that's all I have. So I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to present on this. And if you have any questions, please contact me. I'd be happy to talk, uh, especially if you have any questions about QIF and the quality, quality information framework. It's something that I think it would be particularly interesting to this group, and I'd be more than happy to discuss that with you. Thank you very much.